Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back. Jim here. Hope everyone's doing well, making great music. So I'm really excited to get into this video because it's gonna be in two parts. It's gonna be dealing with plugins. The first part, I'll be going over how to install a plugin and possible troubleshooting issues you might have. It's easy, I'm MuseScore Documents, just click on plugins, it's there, right? Folder's empty, what? This doesn't work. The second part of the video will be discovering the plugin tempo changes and talking about how I use it and also giving some important tips that will help speed up your workflow. Let's begin. Okay, so here we are at the MuseScore plugin site and I will go ahead and leave the link in the description so you can get to the right site. When we're gonna go for plugins, they have different categories and we're gonna be doing tempo changes. So we need to go to playback in this case. So there it is. And then you have to know your compatibility. I'm using the most recent one. Then we're gonna click apply and then you'll have a menu that comes up for playback. That's pretty cool. We are gonna go down to tempo changes. We're gonna click on that. So the first thing you see is a description on how this plugin works. I don't see an install button anywhere. So how to find that is you scroll all the way to the bottom. When we're gonna click on MuseScore 3, and this is a zip file, so it's gonna download quite quickly. All right, so while that's downloading for a few seconds, I just wanna to go to MuseScore real quick and open that up. We need to know about the plugin folder, and then also we need to go to edit and check out preferences. Let's go to the plugin manager. To get to that, just click on plugins. Look at plugin manager. This will tell you what MuseScore has right now, and if it's checked off, that's what you can use. We don't see tempo changes because we need to install that. Now we're gonna to go to edit and we're gonna look for preferences at the bottom. We're gonna click on general. Now we're adding to the program, meaning we're using a plugin that will help with our workflow. So it's not stock, it's not a default template. I was very thankful that one of the programmers commented on one of my videos saying, listen, if you go ahead, put a new plugin with the default plugins, when it, you receive an update, it will delete that plugin and it'll erase it. So you better off making another file. Now looking at your path name, you see plugins, make sure you have C users, James, that's me. You can create your own new folder. When you make your own folder, make sure you did it in documents first, and then you can go ahead, click on the folder, click on documents. And if you can see here, I just made a quick example. I labeled it plugin example. So you just select that. Now some new users, I've uh, been there. Uh, you might get confused because it says no items match your search. We're assigning a folder right now, so don't worry about that. After you click select, you have to click apply, and then you're good to go. By the way, if you're finding value out of my content, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out. So I use the word extract because some zip files, there's a lot of programs written in, and sometimes you have to extract all, and there's a few processes. You might wait for prompts. In this plugin, all you have to do is double click, and then click one more time to open up the program and you'll see tempo changes dot QML. That's what you need. After I install this and put it into the right folder, I will go ahead and delete this because it's going to its forever home. Okay, so now I wanna get it to out of downloads and to the MuseScore plugin folder. So for me, what works best is I simply copy it and then I go to that folder that I assigned it to and I paste it. So here I go, go to documents, and then I go to MuseScore, plugins, and I've already pasted it. So that will work, that's fine. Now I have MuseScore open, you might need to close the program and relaunch it. Let's try it. All right, so here we are at the plugins folder. We're gonna go to plugin manager. After clicking on Plugin Manager, we're gonna look for tempo changes, and there it is. So I'm acting very calm because there's major construction going outside, so we'll see if this video can continue. I hope so, this is the fun part. The second part is we have tempo changes, so let's go ahead and pick a phrase. And in this phrase, we're going to maybe create an accelerando or maybe a retardando. So I selected uh, three measures here. Now I'm gonna go up to Plugins, and you're gonna see tempo changes. And there we have it. So this is exciting. I'm gonna go ahead and create a retardando. This is a staff tech, so you could probably write anything you want. Slow down, please. I'm asking the construction workers outside to slow down so I can finish this video. Now we have beats per minute. So we can start wherever you have your uh, tempo selected. I'll keep it at 122. 
and then I'm gonna pick an ending BPM and I will go to 40. Now, I have a linear line here, which means it's gonna gradually slow down. It's gonna to try to, the algorithm, the different tempos, it's gonna slow everything down. So after I click OK, you'll see all these invisible tempo markings. I'm gonna click Apply. And now you can see we have our text and then all of this. All right, so don't panic. That's not gonna be printed out. That's invisible. And I've watched some users click one at a time. You don't need to do that. If you don't like how it sounds, you can control Z it. And then another tip is you can just go to edit element or select, sorry, select, and then click on all similar elements in staff. And then you can press delete that way if you wish. So you can go back. Now we can listen to it to see how it sounds. That works, and I think that maybe that tempo at quarter equals 40 is maybe too slow, but you really get a multi retardando there if you wanna use that. Now let's go back to plugins and try the curved algorithm. So when we click on curved, we can select how we want your phrase to speed up or slow down. So the benefit of this is some users will put tempo markings manually on every note or every measure. And if it's eight measures, that's pretty time consuming. This uh, plugin helps with that, speeds it up. So when we look at the curve, we're starting at 122. So if we are here, nothing will happen. I mean, it might slow down a little bit. You're asking it to change just a teeny bit. You see 99% and you're kind of defeating the purpose of a retardando. Let's see, it'll slow down a little bit but it'll be very drastic at bar 13. There we go. So I wanted to exaggerate that. You would never really, I, I guess you could do that if you wanted to. So that will let you know to the far right is where you don't change anything really. So then you can slowly change the tempo and if you can think about it percentage wise if you like. I generally use linear, it does the job. Okay, so there you go. Now you know how to get plugins from the site and then download it correctly and figure out what folders you need it in. So let me know how you're doing. If you have questions, leave a comment or if anyone else is watching this, if you have a way of downloading plugins, a faster way of doing it, feel free to share. Just keep in mind when you use these plugins, you're really gonna speed up your workflow and that's really important. I wish everyone well and until next time, happy music making.